to in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for this day that he, he has brought us again. As uh, we said last week, we have been doing series in the Holy Week of the teachings. And uh, we had the topic salvation, whereby we started at the introduction and also God's purpose. And today we'll be speaking about God's plan for salvation. God's plan for salvation as we continue that series of salvation to be able to know more about it. And later, as we continue this week, we'll be teaching about the, the crucified Christ and also the process and also the cost of salvation. So please we welcome you for this time. That you'll be with us together as we're able to hear the word of God. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we do come before you want to thank you this day for your blessings upon our life. You've been so good to us. We humble ourselves before you and call upon your name that as we go to hear your word, you speak to us the graver name. Lord, we surrender to you and we pray this trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, today, we want to speak about God's plan for salvation. The plan for salvation was conceived in heaven and carried out on earth. God is holy. The people he had created had become unholy. He had given them free will so that they could enjoy a loving relationship with him. For without free will, um, the ability to choose love is impossible. Yet men had abused the free will by choosing to please themselves rather than God, to fulfill their own wills rather than his. They had sinned and rebelled against the Lord, authority, through agreeing to the devil's temptation. And there is no way in which they could make their own way back into his favor or into his loving relationship with him. Only God himself could save them from the separation that had taken place between God and man. And this he longed to do. However, God is not only holy, he is just. He could not say that sin did not matter. Neither could he pretend it didn't exist. He, this just, you know, his just, holy, and light judgment on sin is that it brought condemnation and death and an internal separation from the Holy One. Man was separated from God because of the sin, and because of that, God has to do something. And the penalty for sin would need to be paid to satisfy that justice. And a sinner could not die on behalf of another sinner to satisfy that justice. For all had sinned, and all were therefore under the same judgment and condemnation. And an innocent man could have to die on behalf of the guilty. Someone sinless would have to receive the death penalty on behalf of the sinners. A righteous one could need to give his life on behalf of the unrighteous. Where could God find a perfect, holy, sinless, totally righteous person? Nowhere. He would therefore need to send his own son from heaven to be born into the world as a man. And God would have to become a man to bring back mankind to himself, to enable this complete forgiveness and restoration to, uh, to unity with himself. And you know, Jesus, the Son of God, would have to be that very human, sharing the weakness of those he was to represent. He would have to be tempted in every way as they were, yet without ever yielding temptation. Only one sin in his life would make him incapable of being the savior of this world. After all, Adam only sinned once to become a sinner. But God had a plan for salvation for humankind. He would need to have a divine nature as well as being thoroughly human to make this possible. So Jesus was to be both man and he was also God, uh, both God and man. God in human flesh. And um, this was the cost of God would have to pay to bring mankind back to himself. And so to God's appointed time, Jesus was born. A human mother, that is Mary, and a divine father, the Holy Spirit. 
he would not be conceived in the normal way. Through the desires of man, his birth was the purpose of the creator and had to be supernatural from a virgin birth. A miracle took place. The birth of Jesus was a miracle that took place. The word through whom God had brought all creation into being was to be born into a world. In the beginning was what that is in John chapter 1 verse 1 and, and verse 3 and verse 14. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and through him all things were made. The world became fresh and made the dwelling among us. When visited by the angel, <coughs> Joseph was told to give Mary's baby the name Jesus the Savior. For this was the mission for which the Heavenly Father was sending his son to be the Savior of this world. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, is the only man ever to live who existed before his conception and birth. He came from heaven to lead men and women back to heaven. And the Bible says in First Timothy, in First One, First uh, Timothy, chapter one and verse fifteen, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save the sinners. He came to save sinners from the condemnation. He came to save us from judgment we deserve, and that to give us the gift of eternal life, and that is what we call God's life. He came to make the gift of God's kingdom available to us. And so he began his ministry among men by saying in Mark chapter 1 verse 15, the time has come, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Repent and believe the good news. Jesus himself was that good news. To believe in him is to receive not only forgiveness of sins, but the God's gift, gift of eternal life. Those who lived with him as his disciples would say, we have seen and testified that the Father who has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. You find that in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 14. Jesus himself said, in, Luke, uh, in Mark chapter 2, verse 17, and also in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have come to call the righteous. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. He affirmed in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Jesus, the Savior, was Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One. And you know, receiving the anointing of the Holy Spirit marked the beginning of his ministry among men. When he returned to his hometown of Nazareth after this event, he went to the synagogue service and read from the prophecy, prophecy of Isaiah, that is Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1 to 2, whereby the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord, uh, the, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom from the captivities and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The time had come for God's work of salvation that would make it possible for any who believed in Jesus to be set free from their sin. Darkness and bondage. For them to experience the grace and favor of God and receive the gift of his kingdom. Having accomplished all that he was sent to do on earth, he would then be restored to the glory of heaven from where he had come. Brethren, when you look at the Bible in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, the Bible is telling us, we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God, he might test death for everyone. Jesus fulfilled the mission for which was sent by his sinning father to be our salvation. The one through whom we could receive God's forgiveness for our sin and guilt. The one who take on himself the punishment of death that we deserved. The one who does deliver us from the punishment and condemnation that our sins and disobedience warranted. 
<laughs> he was made a little lower than angels so that was crowned uh, to the glory and honor and be able to he suffered death so that we may fulfill and receive all these if you read the bible <laughs> you find it says in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have an eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through his Son, Jesus. All this is summed up in this verse from the Bible, in John chapter 3, verse 16, for God's son of the world, he gave his only son. And this is the gospel. This is the good news that in Jesus, God accomplished everything for our salvation. He was in the world, and through the world, he was made through him. And the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to them, he came to that, that which was his own, but did not recognize him. John chapter 1, verse 10 and verse 11. He was rejected by those he came to save. God was making salvation available to all, but he was not going to force his will on anyone. Everyone needs salvation. But today, as in Jesus' time, many choose to remain in their, in, in their sins instead of receiving God's offer of salvation. Why should they do this? The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 19 and 20, uh, Jesus is explaining this well, that this is a verdict, light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. And everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. To reject Jesus is to reject the salvation God offers. It is to remain under the condemnation that is common to all who have ever sinned, the very condemnation that Jesus came to save us from. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of God's once and only son. In the name of that son is Jesus our savior. How dangerous to reject him. To remain under condemnation in this life. And to suffer internal condemnation as a result. Better to live in him. Receive his life now and the assurance of eternal glory in heaven. And Peter, in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, knew this very well. He is saying, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Brethren, for us to live, we need to have a battle to believe in him. We need to receive his life now and the assurance of eternal glory in heaven because that is the purpose of God. God's plan for salvation was to give his and only son to die on the cross. And we can find that he came to seek the lost and to find them. And that is God's purpose. And that is God's plan that we are here, that God came to seek for us through God, Jesus, his son Jesus Christ being born through Virgin Mary. The plan for salvation was conceived in heaven and carried out on earth. And we know God has a purpose for us. And it is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.